We know that the titration is a lab technique that is used to determine the concentration of an unknown substance. So the example we are going to be doing today is where we are titrating sodium hydroxide with hydrochloric acid. The hydrochloric acid here is our standard solution. We know that standard solution means that it is a known concentration. We also refer to it as our titrant. Then the sodium hydroxide that we'll be using is our unknown concentration substance. So we know it is sodium hydroxide, but we do not know the concentration. So the ultimate goal here is to add equal amounts of acids and base. And we can do that because we know that both of these are either a strong acid or a strong base. So they will completely neutralize each other with equal number of moles. So what we can do is if we can determine an exact volume of sodium hydroxide, and then also, since we know the volume and concentration of hydrochloric acid, we would know how many moles of acid have been added. And with that, we can determine the number of moles of base that were present and from that, the concentration. So in order to find our initial to get the known concentration or the known volume of sodium hydroxide, we use a pipette. And a pipette, this pipette is marked as 25 milliliters, 25 or 0 0.0025 cubic decimeters. So that is 0 0.025 cubic decimeters. So we use this pipette filler to ensure that the pipette quantity exactly aligns with what it is marked as. We also ensure that it is the bottom of the meniscus that aligns with that mark. What we then do is we deposit this quantity of sodium hydroxide into a conical flask. We will see that the conical flask here does have some liquid present in it already. And that is because it has been rinsed with water, which is acceptable because the number of moles of sodium hydroxide does not change when we add it to water. So it is safe to rinse the conical flask out in water. It is important to remember, however, that the concentration within the pipette must remain constant. And so when we rinse the pipette out before using it, we do that with the substance to be used, in this case, sodium hydroxide. We then, since this is a strong acid and a strong base, we can use bromothymol blue, which we know is blue in a base and yellow in an acid. But what interests us is the equivalence point here, which is the point where the quantity of acid has completely neutralize the quantity of base and we know that that happens when this is a green color. So the titration is done with our burette here where we use a stopcock valve or tap to deposit an exact quantity of the acid or the titrant present. Now we have done a rough titration already. A rough titration is one where you allow this to run a bit faster so that you get an idea of where you expect the equivalence point to be. In this case, we found in our rough titration equivalence point to be around 12.5 milliliters. And so what we can do is we can speed the reaction up until we get there, until we get close to around 12, at which point we would slow it down because we do not know at what exact point the equivalence would happen. Now, as you can see, the place where the acid is added to the solution already starts to a slight color change, which is why it's important to, as you move or to, as you titrate here with the acid to continue moving this so that the acid and base mix entirely. What is also possible here and necessary is to ensure that there's no acid or base trapped on the side of this conical flask. So I would flush it out with water. Once again, this is allowed because the water is not changing the amount of acid or base that is present. It is only making sure that it is at the bottom of this conical flask. So what we would do now is you would allow the titration to proceed slowly by opening the valve very slightly. You would always hold the valve in your strong hand while allowing your other hand to slowly allow the mixture to happen. And as you get closer and closer to that expected equivalence point, I am now at 12.2, you would set the valve 
to drop the acid even slower. Once again, taking care to mix this properly because you do not want to pass the equivalence point because then you do not know what exact quantity of acid is necessary to neutralize completely with the base. And what you can see here is that there's literally one drop that takes the solution from being blue to being green. So we say that this is the equivalence point. We can read here that I've added 12.7 milliliters of acid. And now using this equation here, since the number of moles of acid must be equal to the number of moles of base, I know the concentration of the acid. I now know what volume of that acid has been added and I know what volume of base was present to start with. So I can now solve for the unknown. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to add a bit more acid to allow this to proceed to what we call the end point where you can see, and there it's happened, you can see we reach an end point where there is now more acid present in the solution and this is now turned yellow. So when doing a titration it's very important to do it slowly enough so that you reach equivalence point and you can stop it there and take your measurement.